Welcome to this week's EMBN show, coming to you from the Forest of Dean Cycle Center. Yes, we've got all the hot gossip, along with some coffee cake and some bacon rolls. Yes, some fantastic surroundings, folks. This is where we spend a lot of our time filming and riding our e-mounted bikes. There's people here getting their orders for their food. It could be bacon rolls, could be cake. Uh, but as you mentioned, there's hot gossip this week in the form of the new Alitech e -Fanes. Now, the Alitech bike is actually famous for being a, a full CNC bike. We saw the Eurobike show, we've seen it at Riva Delgada, making it actually one of the most expensive e-mounted bikes on the market, around about 15,000 euros. But like I said, it's very, very special. Um, but the great news is they have now brought out a more affordable bike. I think it's coming in at just uh, over 5,000 euros. But some, some of the regular features, Chris, 170 mil travel. Yeah, Talk 100, through it. 170 mil travel, aluminium frame, rolls on mixed wheels. So you've got 29 out front, 27.5 out back. Shimano EP8 motor, a couple of choices on the battery side. So there's 504 watt hours or a 630 watt hour battery in there. And it's pretty lightweight at 23 kilos. So, whoa, yeah, good, whoa. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? And I guess you get a, you get um, available in different component specifications, right? Yeah, so this is how they've got to this price point. So it starts at 5,999 euros, but it's fully customizable. We've got different frame colors on there, different frame decal colors, uh, the battery size, as I mentioned earlier, even the power switch that you can design if you want an internal or an external power uh, switch on this. And things even just down to the seat post choices. You mm -hmm. can actually go for a fixed seat post on this to save you a bit of cash over a dropper option. As we know, not everyone wants a dropper on their uh, on their e-bike, do they? Well, you say that. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Alitech comes with the Shimano uh, EP8 motor, but there's other news on the motor front this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Yamaha have now launched a PWX2. Uh, PWX2, yeah. More bacon orders going on there, excuse us for that folks. Uh, yeah, the new PWX motor, it's a lower power 65 Newton meters, yeah. I do believe. Uh, it's got a, a significant uh, saving in the weight on it. And remember, the, P, the Yamaha motors come as the PWX, which you get on bikes such as the Giant Rain, as on the Giant Trance, but this is quite different, isn't it? Yeah, so this is actually more of a budget style kind of motor. It's not aimed at uh, attacking kind of like the Vizua uh, Ride 60, uh, market is more aimed at bringing a powerful motor to uh, a slightly cheaper e-bike. So you might see that on some lower spec e-bikes. It's still packing a punch, 75 Newton meters this motor. Yeah, so I guess what we're, what we're talking here is it's the equivalent to say what the old sort of Shimano E8000 compared yeah. to E7000 exactly. was, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, so hopefully you guys are always talking about uh, having bikes at more affordable price points. Well, I think this is the kind of motor that will make those bikes happen. Yeah, definitely. It's got some cool features on there. A new display, three inch LCD display, and the actual system itself has got that fully automatic motor Mode, kind of similar to the Bosch system where you can, it will go from eco to turbo depending on how hard you're pushing those cranks. So yeah, yeah some exciting stuff from yeah. the Yamaha. Cracky motor and uh, from, uh, by all accounts, a very reliable motor mm -hmm. as well too. Now a brand that is close to home here down in the southeast of England is Psycho or Sicko, I don't know how you pronounce this one, but they're doing a really nice custom set of mudguards for a specialized Levo. So obviously winter time is coming up and e-bikes- It's a long time away, isn't it? Absolutely covered in mud. But this guard from Sicko, especially the rear mudguard, integrates really nicely around the seat stays and that seat stay bridge incorporates that. So it's nice and snug. It's not necessarily gonna keep you from getting muddy, but it's definitely gonna protect your shock, your linkage, and of course that motor from all that sludge from the back wheel and the front mudguard well, it's pretty traditional Chris, kind of are, looking. Chris, are, uh, are you a rear mudguard person? I do run the little mud guard, but not. I'm not one of those ones that go over the big, you know, the whole tire, you small yeah. you're kind of thing, right? I don't know. Folks, let's know. Are you rear mud guard persons? Yes or no? Uh, certainly, it's good for uh, keeping the weight off your bike, that's for sure. Right, it's time to go out and about to see where you guys and girls have been riding your e-bikes all over the world. Time to put this glass. Yes, I think so, Chris. Ah, now there's a spot I know very well. That's in the Brecon Beacons. That's um, the old crashed Wellington bomber, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's above, uh, uh, not, well, actually not far from Danarogov Show Caves. And who is it? Craig. It's Craig, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's Cube Stereo. What a, nice. 
Guys, you get a chance to go there, amazing location. Got an amazing shot here in here from Lona. He's out in uh, Brasov on his Levo Comp 2021. Sunny afternoon after a couple of days storm. Looks still nice and luscious that far. Yeah, so. oh yes, I recognize this place. This is definitely Kumkarn. Guys, mm -hmm. if you've not been to South Wales and savored some, some trail centers, the, uh, that's, uh, the Caval Trail is certainly one to uh, get you Get your hands around. Three day, uh, three pound for parking all day for that. Chris, ethic. that's that's Blue Mountains. It is Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains. Colin out on his Mer Merida E140 exploring. See, see, that would make a fantastic um, bike vault shot, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Nice backdrop on there, but yeah. There nice. you go, folks. Love uh, seeing with all those shots. Uh, keep keep them coming in using the upload service, and the details for that are down below. Right, it's shop shout out time. We've got some great deals going on in the merch shop at the moment. We've got the new jerseys in there. We've got purple ones, sand ones. 88. 88, we've got black ones. And the great news for you guys is that we've got 10% off the bundles when it comes with the shorts. So you're gonna save 10% off that price. So get in there and check out all the kit. You're not gonna get 88 off, but you're gonna get 10% off. Now on the channel this week, uh, me and Chris are gonna be talking about a very hot topic, and that is uh, the subject about light to mid assist e-mounted bikes, what they can do and who they're for. And then on Sunday, we're seeing two, part two of our in-depth look at TQ Motors. Now we were at the factory last week, whereas this time we're taking a full uh, look at, at the HPR 50 motor, what it can do, the features, and uh, yeah, proper deep dive into that one. Nice. Right, it's time for send of the week and we've got this great entry in here from Johan out on his Levo comp in, in Sweden. Johan. Johan getting his uh, Levo testing the water surfing capabilities out But that's fair enough, that. it's not very deep. It's, no, it's you know, right, isn't it? I, I think it's very cool. Yeah, nice really clean your tires, get the grip to go and do the next climb. <laughs> like it, Johan, like yeah. it. Keep all those videos coming in, make sure you use that upload service. Right, it's time to get involved in all the comments from our recent videos here on EMBN. And recently, Steve did a great video all about ABS versus analog. It's very kind of you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. First comment is coming in from Cleftic. He says, totally useless on mountain bike, but on commuter bikes that run 45 kilometers an hour in the city, it will be useful. Well, that was the whole, actually, the whole point of, of ABS is that uh, this ABS system, the latest one, isn't actually just for commuting. There's different... Uh, modes. There's ABS commute, there's ABS road, and there's uh, ABS all mountain and ABS trail. I think I've got it wrong, but basically my point is, is that ABS trail is quite a different system. It's more powerful. Um, it's made for use off-road. And what I can tell you that it does work. It's fantastic for certain types of riding, particularly adventure riding. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe World Cup downhill riders will be into it. You know, maybe you've got maybe 1% of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the world's e-mountain bikers. That's class. Right, next comment in from Island Aerial. Yeah, that's all e-mountain bikes need. More complications on top of the already crazy maintenance and parts required to keep the thing rolling. Hard pass on anti-lock. Uh, first of all, folks, sorry for the uh, interruption from the overly loud uh, silencer on that bike. Uh, but to answer that question, um, it's quite simple. ABS is simply a little box which adds, I think ABS adds 300 grams. Uh, it takes very little charge from the battery. And um, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic technology which will actually apply to a huge amount of people to make their riding experience just better. I mean, if you think about it, if you're going on a long descent, um, you can get tired. And what happens is, you know, you're thinking about your line choice, you're thinking about your body position, and you're thinking about your braking. It simply removes the guesswork out of that part of your riding. So I think that technology comes at a really low price to pay in terms of weight and mm -hmm. price. Let's, let's not forget, I think it puts, I think you're talking a few hundred pounds onto a bike, not, not thousands. So, yeah. uh, and last comment is in from Peter Petrov. He says, if you need ABS on your e-mountain bike, you should not be riding. Other than that, great video and the system will be great for casual is that, city riders. Is that not like saying if, if you need, need sticky tires or if you need full suspension or exactly. if you need good suspension or... It's all good right? I mean, it's all, it's all great technology. Exactly. It just takes a while for it to settle and sink in with some people. Definitely. We get involved in the comments box down below. We love hearing all your comments about all the videos and we definitely read them too, right? We do. 
baby trying to sleep. Yeah, a little sausage trying to sleep. I mean, that motorcycle did not help. Chris, I hope you've not got a loud, loud silence on your bike. I haven't. I've actually put the baffles in it to quiet, uh, quieten it down. Put your baffles in. Disappear right. at six o'clock in the Let's morning. Let's get the baffles in on the bike vault. Right, your baffles ready. Kicking things off. You baffle me, I tell you. We've got uh, this great looking bike in from Paul. He's got Scott Genius and Estonia. What do you think of that one, Steve? Super nice. Super nice. Yeah. Ooh, crikey, that's quite complicated. That's uh, John's True Effect. Fuel, true, true fuel, track fuel. <laughs> yeah, it's nine point seven. It's it's nice. Haunted Hills bike park. It just haunts me that it's wet. Uh, and next that, shot. That's that's super nice, isn't it? What Look, do you think beautiful. about the shadow coming in there, Steve? Eighty-three. Matthew's got a twenty twenty-one specialized Levo comp out in California. It looks like a looks like a bow and arrow coming in. It does, doesn't it? I think it's a nice. I think it's a nice shot. Nice shot. Okay. Moving on. That's super nice. From Lucas, he's got a 2020 Decathlon Stylus out in... Uh, it's a good looking bike, that Decathlon, isn't it? Poland, yeah. I mean, is. yeah, that comes in like two and a half grand. Mm -hmm. It's a great buy, isn't it? And a quarry. Would you say super, super nice? Super nice, for sure. Right, next up, Manuel's got his Orbea Rise out in Luxembourg. Have we had any Luxembourg nice shots before? I don't think so, it's new, isn't it? What, well, new the, country? Uh, no, new to the bike vault. <laughs> and he's got a Steve Jones uh, e-bike stick underneath, look. A bent stick. Yeah, exactly. What do you think? The bent stick and baffle, that's a good name for a pub, isn't it? Jack? Yeah, nice. Jack yeah. agrees. Super nice. Uh, next up, we've got this bike in from Boards. It's got Whoa. a custom turbo lead out on Northern Ireland. Finally bit the bullet and got myself an e-bike. He says, buying the whole bike was way too expensive, so I went hunting for a frame and built it up out of my own part. So, nice looking bike that, isn't very it? Nice, very nice. Chris. Gold. Nice, I think. Nice, nice. Next shot is nice. I mean, yeah, needs a bit of work, that shot. That's uh, Rocky Mountain from Lee. Lee, you're not saying the Rocky Mountain is not an incredible bike, but the shot, Needs a bit of work. Hard to shoot, isn't it, night riding shots? And the yeah. last bike is in from Dan. He's got Santa Cruz Heckler out in Canic Chase. First ride out on my new Santa Cruz. Better than a new kettle, apparently. So energy saving. <laughs> <laughs> Liking that, and that's a super nice to round up this week's bike vault. And also that rounds up this week's show mm -hmm. from the Forest of Dean Cycle Centre. Mm -hmm. Folks, sorry, sorry for some of the, uh, the food orders coming on in the background there. And the motorbike. Sorry about the baffle. <laughs> uh, sorry about our colleagues from GMBN who are busy eating their uh, Forrester Dean burgers, there they multiple, are down over there, look. Multiple bacon rolls. He, you'd think Richard would take his hat off, wouldn't you? I oh, know, he's keeping safe at the dinner table, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. But get involved in the comments box down below. Let us know what you think about that new Alley Tech bike. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and we shall see you next week.